Good morning, Smoky Hill family. We'll begin our worship in just a few moments. As we begin our time together, I would like to uh, read a letter to you from Pastor Felicia, and uh, then uh, Tom Dosh will also share a word with us as well. Many of you maybe saw this letter in yesterday's e-blast. This is from Pastor Felicia. Dear Smoky Hill family, it is with great disappointment and sadness that I write this letter. As of January 1st, 2021, I am returning to medical leave. My spirit is willing and ready to continue in ministry with you, but my body cannot continue. A rare diagnosis, the stress of ministry, and the added stress of the pandemic and all that has come with it has been more than my body can endure, despite much prayer and intentional self-care. Thank you for allowing me to serve God by serving you. Thank you to all of those who have fervently prayed for me, supported me through various acts of kindness, and who gave so generously for me to be seen at the Mayo Clinic a little over a year ago. This allowed me to finally put a name to the mysterious illness that turned my life upside down five and a half years ago. I love handwritten letters and cards, and I had planned to send each of you a thank you. Unfortunately, ministry used up my limited energy. For that, I truly apologize. Please know that I am grateful beyond words. When I came to Smoky Hill United Methodist Church, I said several times that I believed that my appointment was divinely orchestrated. I still believe this to be true. During my time with you, I had the joy of watching amazing little ones and youth who clearly know God and are destined for great things. I was blessed to see a community that loves each other no matter what. I received hugs that felt like heaven. I watched proudly as lay leaders found creative ways to serve their community and beyond after COVID changed life as we know it. I served with lay leaders on Sunday who truly know the meaning of serving something beyond themselves. I experienced some hurtful things, but watched some people learn from my pain. My appointment to Smoky Hill was as much for me as it was for you. I would not trade what God revealed to me and the lessons I have learned. John Wesley said that the world is God's parish, church. For you to effectively grow in ministry to the world, you must not remain unaware and uninformed about all people. Instead, I invite you to, one, see, hear, and value the full humanity of all people. Two, respect the dignity and agency of all who you serve. Three, continue to do inner spiritual work so that you serve from God's love not your own agenda. Fourth, finally and most importantly, intentionally nurture your relationship with God, the Spirit, and Source. For apart from God's grace and power, you can do nothing. As you think about the new year ahead, I leave you with several scriptures to ponder throughout the year. I believe they will sustain and encourage you as we adjust to whatever the future holds. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own intelligence. In all your ways, submit to God, and God will make your paths straight. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things, everything you need, will be given to you as well. Therefore, stop worrying about tomorrow. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Matthew 6, 33 and 34. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. And persevere and be faithful in prayer. Romans 12, 12. Until we meet again, sending you love, light, and and prayers, Pastor Felicia.
Tom Dosh now will share as well. And uh, Felicia, Pastor Felicia, know that uh, we send our love to you as well. Thank you for your service, and God bless you. Hi, I'm Tom Dosh, the SPRC chair. And I just wanted to come to you guys and let you know that Reverend Felicia is going to go on leave uh, effective January 1st of 2021. Um, she is on, going on medical leave and we are going to so miss her. You know, she has been amazing for us, a great resource. She has been kind and loving and ministered to us in so many different ways. Um, we hope that she is able to find some healing and some energy and that medical advances allow for different answers to be given to her so that she can find peace and a regaining of strength. We are so thankful for all that she's done for us. We are going to set up a um, Zoom that we will be announcing details in an e-blast um, and on Facebook. Um, we hope to see you there as a virtual goodbye. And also next week on Sunday, if you'd like to drop off cards for Reverend Felicia, we'll collect them during our parking lot ministries on January 3rd. And we look forward to finding some other support for Reverend Derek um, so that we can continue to reach Smoky Hill Congregation. Thank you for all that you guys have done for the church this year, and we look forward to a great 2021. Greetings in the name of Emmanuel. Because Christ has been born into the world, People who walked in darkness now live in great light. Because Christ has been born into the world, the power to oppress and kill will not stand. Because Christ has been born in the world, we respond in wonder. With the angels, we sing glory to God. With the shepherds, we share the good news. With Mary, we ponder the gift of his birth and the word that has come into the world. Emmanuel, God is with us. Hi, I'm Jan Whitman from Montana West, District Superintendent. Angels we have heard on high. Angels, messengers. Who have been the messengers in your life this Advent Christmas season? What has been the message that they have had for you? Angels we have heard on high. Eric Dye, pianist at Epworth United Methodist Church in Kalispell, Montana.
Hello and Merry Christmas. I'm Jessica Rooks, the District Superintendent for the Mile High Metro District. And I wanted to share with you this morning a few of my nativity scene characters. I have to tell you, I love the nativity scene. The manger scene, the creche, whatever you call it. I've always loved the nativity scene. It's always been one of my favorite decorations. We actually have six different nativity scenes set up in our house somewhere. So here's just a few pieces from a few of them. The nativity scene is fantastic because each character has a special place in the story and the story wouldn't be complete without all of them. But there's one character, one set of characters who's always just kind of fascinated me. And that's the wise men. Actually, I like to think there were some wise women in there too along on the journey. Scripture calls them wise men, so we'll go with that. I like the wise men because their story is actually a little different. And if we really paid attention to the scripture, it reveals something exciting about them. Because according to scripture, the wise men followed a star to Jesus' home, but the star didn't actually begin to rise until Jesus was born. The wise men didn't start their journey until Christmas Day, the day that Jesus was born. For Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the innkeeper and the animals, well, their part of the story begins before Jesus' birth, and it, it kind of ends when Jesus was born. But not for the wise men. The wise men begin their journey on Christmas Day. They begin their journey with Jesus' birth. I have to be honest, I think sometimes we get confused. We think that the season of Christmas ends on Christmas Day. That the season of Christmas began the day after Thanksgiving, and now it comes to an end on Christmas Day. But that's actually not true. The season of Christmas has just begun. It's the season of Advent that started weeks ago and ended on Christmas Day. But the season of Christmas begins with Jesus' birth. We're just in the beginning of the Christmas season. And the wise men remind us of that. The wise men remind us that Christmas is inviting us into a new journey, but it's just the beginning. And so I wonder, I wonder what would happen if we tried to be more like the wise men this year. What could happen if we thought of Christmas Day as a beginning, not an ending? What if we chose to start a new journey for Christmas this year, to do one thing different beginning now? Just one small thing, Maybe it's telling your family that you love them at least once a day. Or being a bit nicer to your brother or your sister just because. What if we chose to do one thing that would spread a bit more hope, peace, joy, and love? One thing different that would show that we follow Jesus' teaching to love God, to love our neighbors, to love ourselves. One thing that would remind us that Christmas is just the beginning. You know, Jesus' birth changed the world 2,000 years ago. And it still can change the world today. Because we can let it change us. We can let ourselves be a little bit like the wise men. And celebrate the birth of Jesus by setting out on a new journey by remembering that Christmas isn't over. Christmas has just begun. So I hope that you keep the spirit of Christmas alive in your heart, in your words, in your actions, not just in this time, but all year long, so that we all would have a very Merry Christmas for the whole year. Amen. Greetings from Wyoming. I'm Mark and this is my wife, Julie. It's a blessing to introduce to you our next musical, 
offering for worship. This musical selection comes from the Chancel Bell Choir in Cody, Wyoming, Cody United Methodist Church. The Bell Choir was established in the mid-2000s, makes use of a number of students and members from the Cody area, participates in a variety of concerts with other groups around town, and is here today to offer you this song. This song you're about to hear is based on a German Christmas carol that was written in the 19th century. Now we know that a lot of Christmas hymns are directed toward children, and as we listen to this beautiful hymn, we're reminded that for children, Christmas is not all about sugar plums and Christmas trees, but it's about the coming of the Christ child. Enjoy. from Isaiah 9, verses 1 through 7. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time God brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the latter time he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden, and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken, as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors, and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. 
the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Ben Gosden wrote, If life has dealt you a good hand, this is quite an enjoyable time of year. But if life has dealt you a bad hand, then that tide of Christmas joy can feel like it's drowning you. Drowning is a good metaphor for how so many of us have felt this Christmas. So many have sunk into a despair that has removed the merry from Christmas. Happy holidays has morphed into a nightmare. It's hard to have a holly jolly Christmas when we can't even see the people we love in person. I'm having a hard time hearing the angel song of peace on earth, goodwill to all, above the weeping and the wailing of those who are grieving. Of what peace do the angels sing when there's so much political infighting? In these days, I find myself returning to the Hebrew scriptures, to the prophet Isaiah's words, the people who walked in darkness. And I realize that, that he's talking more than the darkness of winter, but a dark night of the soul that's filled with feelings of paralyzing hopelessness with, with no escape. The people who walked in darkness. There are some for whom this time of year is particularly painful. We become acutely aware of the loss we've experienced. Death of loved ones, the alienation and rejection of our family, our personal failures that we carry causes us to wander in a darkness which can't be pushed back by Christmas lights. The people who walked in darkness. I always hate the days after Christmas. I, I keep playing in my head that theme song of the Poseidon Adventure. There's got to be a morning after. After the heady rush of sugar cookies and good cheer, we're left looking around at the tinsel that's showing worse for wear and a sadness that threatens to overwhelm us again. Thank God, Isaiah doesn't leave us hanging in the darkness of despair. He keeps reminding us of the amazing thing that happens in a Bethlehem stable. He says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For those who lived in a land of deep shadows, light, starbursts of light. I need to be reminded of this promise of Christmas, even when we are in the darkness of night. The promise of a sunrise will never fail. When things feel most helpless, we will find a strength that, that we didn't know was there. When we're feeling most hopeless, there will be an inbreaking of love when we least expect it. This is what Christmas is all about. God didn't come when all was right with the world. In spite of all that was wrong, God showed up to say through Jesus' birth, I'm not going to leave you in darkness and despair. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Isaiah foretells that birth of Jesus, for a child has been born, for us, the gift of a son, for us. He'll take over the running of the world. His names will be amazing, counselor, strong God, eternal one, prince of wholeness. His ruling authority will grow and there'll be no limits to the wholeness he brings. When this truth breaks into our lives, we are filled with a joy that gets us through the darkest days of despair and hopelessness. I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine. Tim was a colleague in the Catskill Mountains of New York. We both were pastoring tiny little churches in the middle of nowhere, and Tim absolutely loved it. He loved it so much that we called him the Bishop of the Mountains because he was so well suited for rural ministry that we couldn't imagine him being a pastor anywhere else. He met a woman from the area and they were married and had two children. He and Janet were made for each other. When I think about it, they were really the first example I ever had seen in my life of true soulmates. It was hard to tell where one stopped and the other one started because 
They complemented each other so well. You couldn't imagine Tim without Janet and Janet without Tim. Tim was a better man and a better pastor because of Janet, and Janet was a better woman and a better teacher because of Tim. While Tim might have been Bishop of the Mountains, he wasn't Bishop of the United Methodist Church. And one day he got a call from our Bishop saying that his skills were needed at a church on Long Island. Reluctantly, he and Janet and their two kids packed up their home and moved to Long Island. It was a, a really difficult transition for them. Janet was really unhappy being away from the mountains, from the, from the home that she knew. But being such a strong couple, they worked through the pain of such a difficult transition. One day, Janet was leaving the church parking lot. Their two kids were in the back seat of the car. As she left the parking lot and entered the road, a, a speeding car broadsided them. The children were fine, but Janet died almost instantly. The depth of Tim's grief was so intense. He had lost his soulmate, the one who made his soul sing. Months passed and, and Christmas came and with it was a Christmas card from Tim. He said, people ask me how I'm doing and, and while I lost a part of me when Janet died, I'm really doing okay. When, when we stood at the altar to be married, we didn't say we were promising each other a life of happiness because we knew happiness could be fleeting and in short supply at times. We knew that there would be hard times and good times. And so what we offered each other was a commitment to live with joy because joy is a gift from God that never fails us. It would be joy that would give us a foundation in the most difficult and trying times. And it would be joy that would bring us even to greater heights in the good times. So in the midst of my grief, I've maintained the vow to live with joy. And it has been joy which has held me up in the season of Christmas. I think of Tim and his commitment to live with joy so often at this time of year. In the face of sorrow, it is joy that enables us to reach out to each other. In the darkness, it is joy that offers light. And I'm reminded once again that God doesn't come into the nice, clean, safe, sanitized places of our lives, but chooses to meet us in the stench and the filth and the hazardous conditions of our world. Came into the world as we come, as vulnerable as a baby, to love and be loved, to offer us a wholeness that we can't even imagine. So seize joy this Christmas season and as we enter into a new year. Cling to it as if your life depends on it because it does. When the world feels overwhelming, remember we are the people who walked in darkness, who will see a great light. We will see the star shining in the sky. We will hear angel voices singing their songs of peace on earth. And we will experience the birth of love into our lives and into our world again and again and again, not just on Christmas, but every day. So joy to the world, my friends. Joy to your life. Joy to your church. Joy to your neighborhood joy to your community, joy to our nation, joy to the world. Amen. One of my favorite holiday songs is Little Drummer Boy. Countless church choirs and recording artists have put their spin on it over the years. It was first published in 1941 as Carol of the Drum by American composer and teacher Catherine Davis. I guess I love it because it cuts to the heart of Christmas. We are blessed with a spectacular cosmic gift in a wondrously humble package. And then we find ourselves inspired to give, to offer what we are able back to Christ as we encounter him in this world. I am a poor boy too. I have no gift to bring that's fit to give the king. Shall I play for you on my drum? Mary nodded. The ox and lamb kept time. I played my drum for him. pa rum pa pum pum I played my best for him. 
Parapapampam. Then he smiled at me. Me and my drum. As we pray over what we have to give this year, a year in which many of our resources have been stretched to breaking, may we allow the Christ child to draw us to a generosity of spirit and a willingness to give authentically from the heart. May your life and that of your church family play for him during the rest of this Christmas season and throughout the year. Amen. Please join us now for a time of prayer. This is a season where the nights are longer and the days are shorter, but we still know more lights coming. We gather in prayer that we might lift one another up you may pause the service now if you would like to light a candle as you lift your prayers. We will pause between each prayer so that you can lift names silently or aloud. We pray for all those who are far from us this week. We, we pray for those who are sick. We pray for our grandmas and grandpas. We pray for those who are hungry. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for the world. We pray for those who feel sad. We lift our hopes to you, O oh God, that you might find the places to light up in our hearts, knowing you surround us and you go with us from the darkness into the light. We pray all of this through Christ, who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. Greetings, people of God, and Merry Christmas to all of you. The year, I hope the year ahead of us, 2021, is filled with God's blessings, hope, and joy for you and your family. I'm here to introduce to you a group of musicians from Broomfield United Methodist Church in Broomfield, Colorado. Music is integral to our spirituality, especially in our worship. So we are thankful to Taylor Martin and his team of musicians from Broomfield. I hope you are blessed by their gifts and talents. He's 
stands above the rulers of the earth. Glorious, glorious, Lord, you are glorious. seen the great light of God, go forth into the world to be God's light. Amen. Mm -hmm.